All right, welcome guys to Money Mondays, where we are focused on raising private capital and investing with purpose. So whether you're a new investor or an experienced investor, or even looking to buy a business, understanding the art of raising private capital is so crucial in today's competitive landscape. So join us as we navigate the complex realm of attracting investors, securing funding, and fuel your business growth. <laughs> Hello, hello, guys. Welcome to Money Mondays. I'm your host, Kalisha, and I have my co-host with me, Betsy, who's back. Hey, hey, guys. Right, Hi. Back. Man, like, it's always insane where when it's time to record something, that's when you have all the issues. Like, I set up, ready to go, and then my microphone decided to, like, be on black. That's so crazy. This is the day I kind of was like leaving it and leaving it because um, I usually try to set up early so I'm not having issues. Mm -hmm. um, but I was so lucky. My husband came early today and he was, I was just like, how oh, let me set up. It's so much better when you have someone like setting up everything and you don't have to like be moving the camera. Like it takes me a few tries to get the camera right. Man. For you guys that I do podcasts, you guys know it's like an issue. It's so much better just to have someone in the back and you're like fixing other things. Getting like all the stuff ready on your computer, everything that you're gonna talk about. So it's just, it's really great to have that. Those extra. <laughs> I think I've learned my lesson. I'm like, I would set up and just sit and wait. Like, just do anything. What if I'm working? Just continue working. Set up and let it be, because it's always when you're like, oh, I got this, and you're like. Shh. Yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm the type of person that I like to have everything ready beforehand or else I will panic. I can't do last minute. No, so I try to have everything ready. But yeah. No, this is the struggle. Well, I don't know how it goes if you guys are recording stuff. Like, what kind of troubles do you guys have? Do you guys resonate? <laughs> no, it is insane. But it's, it's I think it's like there certain things are out of our control sometimes. But well, being prepared because you will do the same thing all the time and it's like that one thing you're like wait you always work microphone you always work what's happening my camera always work i know and i had this issue last week my camera wasn't working so i had to use something else and then this week i actually asked my husband yesterday i'm like hey can you look into this because it's not working and mm -hmm. i don't know what's going on my computer's just not reading my camera so I had to use something else, and that's what I used today, but it's also what I used last week. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but it's a good thing I have, like, backup. Man, that's always the main thing. But, guys, like, today we're going to talk about – so last week we – it was all about access anything as it relates to private capital. We also pitched how to – um pitch to a potential private money lenders without even hard selling that was pretty dope we had eddie charger on last week and then this week we have Noah hoffman um so i know a lot of persons who are part of the pace morby sub two community is familiar with no episode huh <laughs> you skipped that episode we had um no last week was oh <laughs> oh last week was just me oh my gosh you guys yeah no here. last week was um andy it was andy oh that was so good yeah, yeah last that was week andy about new construction mm -hmm. that was a great episode you guys so definitely check that out if you guys missed it um especially if you're looking to get into the new construction space i think that would be a very beneficial episode for you guys to listen to or even watch yeah. Um, or the one before with Eddie, which like they were pitching. It was so mm -hmm. cool. I was so sad. That was that good. No, but, that was dope. But yeah. even today, we have Noah Huffman. And Noah is going to talk about, he does a lot of short term rental, property management, raising capital, all the fun stuff. And I think a lot of persons ask questions too. Like I got this question the other day. And it was like, Kalisha, if I'm doing a short term rental and using private money, how do I structure the deal? So we're going to dive into that. But before we do, um, Betsy, you want to hit them with that disclaimer? Yes, the disclaimer, you guys. Just remember, we have to say this every time, um, that the following information is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence. We do not provide 
financial, legal, or professional advice. Just, you know, have in mind that everything that we talk about is from our experiences or our guests' experiences, yeah. and every case is different. So please talk to those experts and licensed professionals so that they can guide you in the best way of your case. And yeah. we can talk about it too. You guys can always call us. <laughs> And if you guys have questions as well, like feel free to drop them in the chat. I know for those who are, will be listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, um, sorry, you won't be able to see the question, but we'll actually read them out too. So at least you will hear what the question is and the answer. So without further ado, we're going to welcome our guest to today's episode, Noah Huffman. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Good. Welcome to Money Mondays. It's good to have you here. Thank you, guys. I've been seeing you around, and I love your presentation. You guys are so clean, and you you just like as soon as you guys arrived, uh, like on the scene, you like you like showed up um, with passion, with force, and like in a very professional manner. So I've been like been saying like like these girls are. Um, our serious business. So, no, so when, you. I, when you guys reached out to me, I, I was honored. Yeah. No, thank, thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> it means so much. It, it really yeah, does. Yeah. And it takes so much work mm -hmm. <laughs> just to do all this stuff. And yeah. um, thank it you. Makes it makes it easier, but we well, I was like, it. This, this is how you, this is how you become successful. You come in like Kalisha and Betsy, you come in and you hit the ground running. And that, that's how, that's how you, that's how I was like, Oh, these, these young women are going to go far fast. And I already, like, I knew that from day one. No. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I thought yeah. Betsy was going to do this thing. She always do this on this. Holding my mic with one hand. I tried. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing this on behalf of Betsy. She does this a ton. So thank you so much. You appreciate it a lot. Uh, I mean, like we've seen you a ton over on in sub two in the public group and everything like that. And especially like checking out your social media, you're doing a lot. So for those who are not in sub two as well, like tell us a little bit, who is Noah, um, what strategy you focus on and how did you get into real estate investing? Okay. Um, well, thank you for asking. And um, so basically when I was um, around 21 years old, um, I met my first real estate mentor Mm -hmm. And well, he was a guy, he owned a bunch of rentals in Berkeley, California. And, you know, I was like, I knew I wanted to like find a successful career. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was like, real estate sounds good. Um, but there was no way for me to get in. He was an yeah. investor. And it, from all I could, from what I could see, it's like, it takes a lot of money to be an investor. So I didn't see any entrance for myself. He was looking for carpenters and stuff like that. Like I couldn't help him. I didn't have that experience yeah. but we became friends we hung out and then i started like a leading with service like let me how can i help him let me find ways to, to be of service to him and um and then when it, and then he he um i heard about airbnb um around 2012 i had mm -hmm. just heard about it and he was like hey i have this vacant studio i'm wondering what i should do with it i said let's put it on airbnb and let me manage it for you mm -hmm. and he said okay like I had already been doing errands for him, going to his properties. And he said, okay, we set it up. I just, I put it online and people just started booking and they just never stopped booking. It was like 7-Eleven. Like they just kept coming oh. and coming. So I just had to like clean the unit and make sure everything was good. Eventually he says, hey, I have another property and another one. And my brother has one. Can you manage his? So I was, man I was like charging 20% um, to manage the units. And then... I had other jobs like driving Uber. I would um, drive Uber in San Francisco and I had to get over the Bay Bridge before the 5.30 a.m. metering lights come on. That's when the traffic starts building up. It's the worst. <laughs> I had to get into San Francisco before 5, before 5.30 yeah. and driving Uber for two years and managing some Airbnbs. And I also had another business which was cleaning carpets. I was able to buy my first property, uh, which was a duplex. So even with self-employment income, as long as it was on two years in a row, two tax returns in a row, and I didn't write off every single thing I probably could have, but I wanted to qualify for a mortgage. So I had to show I made whatever $100,000 to be able to buy this duplex in the East Bay. 
And um, and that was the first property I bought. I also started, we you know, I had a carpet cleaning business and I um and I would pitch Airbnb to the property owners. They would call me to clean their carpet. And I would say, have you heard of Airbnb? And then one woman hired me to, you know, to partner with me on one of her properties. She said, hey, I want to list my property for sale in the summer. Can you Airbnb it for six months? I was like, sure, we can we can try anything. But she was like, I don't want to spend any money on furniture. So I said, OK, well, I'll get a bunch of free furniture from the Craigslist free section or used. But I have to get paid back everything I spend first and then we'll split it like 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever, because mm -hmm. she didn't want to spend any money. Yeah. Um, then I started renting properties from people, which was the arbitrage model. I rented five properties from a guy. It took him a year to say yes. I used to clean his carpets. He owned a bunch of apartments in my neighborhood. And, um, and I talked, eventually he said yes, because rent control just hit Richmond, California. And he was like, oh, I can't deal with this. Take one. And then he saw how nice we kept it. Cleaners coming all the time. We furnished okay. it beautifully. He was like, I have another one and another one and another one. And, um, and so I, every time he gave me another one, I would negotiate a little better deal like, um, OK, no deposit this time or something like that or half deposit. Uh, anyhow, so then, like I said, I started I bought the first one. The next year I started one of my um, things was invest managing from out of town. Another friend mm -hmm. said, hey, can you manage a unit in Vegas? And at first I was like, no way. How could I do that? It's, it's a whole state away from me. Oh, yeah. He like, we, yeah, he was like, we have some nephews on the ground. They can help with anything you need. We just need you to do the online part. I said, OK, I'll try it. And it went surprisingly well. So eventually, like, OK, I'm going to get another one in Vegas and another one. Can you handle those? Um, and so I had I started to get confidence with managing out of town. I would mm -hmm. hire cleaners and handymen online and everything worked out. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that gave me confidence to buy my second property in Fresno, California, which is three hours away. It's like halfway between L.A. and San Francisco, but it's like out of state prices. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's like Texas prices, so, but in California. So even with this, like, did you do like any like real estate course or mastermind or anything like that? Or you were just learning on the, on, as you go along? Yeah. yeah it was well, I, I, it sounds like. Yeah. I started listening to bigger pockets. That was the first <laughs> thing. And like, and honestly, it took a couple years before I bought mm -hmm. my first property to clean up my credit. My credit yeah. was like, I had a 450 credit score. I had to like pay a guy to help me fix my credit. And he was writing all these letters to dispute inquiries. And it took a couple of years to get it up to like 657 before I bought that first duplex. A year later, I got another one, another property in Fresno and then built an ADU. That was one of my special weapons was building ADUs in the backyard, mm -hmm. like convert the garage. And then a year later, I bought another one. And I thought I had life figured out. OK, I can buy a property every year with the conventional mortgage and um, and build an ADU and put them on air. Mm -hmm. and, and at that time, I was killing it in Airbnb in Fresno. Uh, basically, one house, um, I was able to double my mortgage payment. And then with the ADU, it was like I could triple my mortgage. So Ooh. that was a great formula. Now things have changed. Like it got more, it's gotten more, like the profits have compressed. Yeah. So I'm always having to like find the next way. To, so now those properties in Fresno have all went up a couple hundred thousand in value. And I'm still buy, I'm continuously buying more uh, creative deals now because that's when yeah. I joined sub two and started buying creative deals. Um, Man. So it, it's insane because a lot of persons would think that, OK, how did you scale so fast? But really, with your different side hustles, you just kept telling people what you're doing. And you are not afraid to be like, hey, let me manage this for you, even though you were either still figuring it out, you didn't have a big company, all those systems. You're like, yeah, he's like, I just want to get that. If you tell me I'm going to manage it, I'll figure it out. And I love that attitude about it. Yeah. How long did it take you from like you starting that first property, managing that first Airbnb to like actually getting properties of your own? Mm -hmm. Um, so it took me about three years before I started renting properties and it took like five years before I started buying them. So I was doing it for a long, I had other jobs and I was just managing one or two units, you know, on the side for a few years. It took a long time. 
Um, but I, I listened to like the first 250 bigger pockets episodes, you know, um, and then before I stopped. Now they're probably yeah. at like 800. They're um, at 800 now. <laughs> probably, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But at what point did you like decide that, okay, I'm going all in with real estate. I'm going to stop doing Uber. I'm going to stop cleaning carpets. So um, that's crazy um, how that happened. But it was, those were very important times when I, mm -hmm. when I eventually stopped those. Cause um, it was actually one point when I started managing more and more properties. Um, I'm trying to remember how many I was managing. I might've been managing by that time, like 20 units. And it was enough to kind of pay my bills. And my wife at the time, just, I think she just got a job where mm -hmm. she had to go to work early in the morning and I had to take our two kids to school. And so if I can't drive Uber in the morning rush hour, then it's not worth doing yeah. at all. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, this is the perfect time. I'm going to quit Uber because yeah. it doesn't make sense to do it after I drop them off at school. You won't make no money. And, um, and then the crazy thing was I tried to keep my carpet cleaning business a little longer because mm -hmm. I, I can make like $100 an hour. So I liked having it on the side, yeah. but it felt like a, a like a sign from the universe because uh, at one point my van got stolen. And then it was like, it's, it's over now. No more playing around, no more. So that, that was that was a few years ago. It was only like three years ago, I feel, um, when the van got. But, but the last year or two, I just had it to clean my own units. I thought I was just yeah. going to... So I really wasn't taking jobs, but um, but I was still playing with the idea of like hiring employees to do it. I was trying to do that. Just to keep it. Know, keep the business. Well, did you eventually it, sell that business or did you just disintegrate? <laughs> I sold I sold the business. Um, um I, I said, okay, I'll sell either the the business with because I was getting a few phone calls a week. So it wasn't a lot of money. It was a few phone calls a week and I had the equipment and I put up an ad online. I said, I'm going to sell the business and the van, or you can just buy one or the other. And a guy talked to me, said, I want to just buy the business, not the equipment. So I kept the equipment and I sold him like the business. It, it was barely any money at all. <laughs> it wasn't worth very much, but, um, but yeah, but, yeah, but I did that. And, uh, and then eventually that equipment got stolen um, oh, later. <laughs> <laughs> found it, the police found the van and it, but it was, it was nasty. People who had been using the bathroom in it, it was like homeless people stole it. And it was older. I said, you know what? Just cause they, yeah, took just all these that with it. I said, just crush, keep it. I don't even want it. Yeah. Man. So even like now, like how many properties are you currently managing right now? I'm managing about 60, but I have like 10 more units coming on in the next 60 days and then another 10 because, you know, I, you know, I partnered up to buy this 20 unit uh, property in mm -hmm. Florida and 10 units are have now been um, rehabbed. And so I'll be taking on those 10 and then there's another 10. It's a 20 unit. So it's going to probably take nine more months for the last 10 units to get you ready um, fixed up but it's always been like you know you know three steps forward one step back something like that so it's like i gain a few units and then somebody that i met, work for they might say okay we're going to sell a few units so i get a yeah. few lose a few you know but it's been slowly growing and short short, with so much going on with short-term rental are you doing any other strategies yes so um at one point um i bought um a, a small portfolio of four properties, um, owner finance in mm -hmm. Fresno also, and they were all on section eight. So I just left them on section eight. Um, and, um, and then, but also recently, um, I do a lot, I do some buy and hold, like I buy a few properties a year. Yeah. Um, and, um, like I just bought a four unit, um, property in St. Louis. I wanted to, um, Test the market. I wanted to put my dib, dabble my toe in St. Louis because I heard it's a cash flow market, you know, um, opposed to California being in a pre high appreciation market. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, I, I need I need a balance of both appreciation yeah. and cash flow. So I said, let me yeah. try St. Louis. I bought a four unit. Two units are already um, occupied by long term tenants, and we converted. You know, we turned the other two into Airbnbs. So that was just about a month ago. We just launched that, um, but also. <laughs> About 10 months ago, I just start, get, got heavy into flipping. 
So because even all the money that I have um, been making with short term rentals, I seem to um, spend all the money. I always spend it all. Like like I'm buying these buying holds and they need a hundred thousand worth of rehab, fifty thousand here, fifty. It's like it's, it's yeah. impossible to keep up with, all. and it okay. takes years to. Get, I mean, I'm building long term wealth for the future, but like I keep running out of money trying to invest yeah. in these properties, and so I said I need another way to make money right now. So I found a great partner who's a general contractor and an agent. He helped me buy this house here. Um, which my personal house is the first house I bought to live in um, mm -hmm. just a year ago. And um, so he was the agent who helped me search. It, it wasn't a creative deal. It was, you know, we, I chose a house in the neighborhood I like and um, and got this house. And he was showing me houses and he helped me like conceptualize how to um, remodel the kitchen, bathroom, move the laundry. So my wife would like the house because she would she didn't like it with the current kitchen. And I was like, OK, we'll do whatever we got to do. And he helped me like say, oh, you can move this here and do that. And so so he had, he had good yeah. ideas. I never knew a lot about construction, you know, or design. Yeah. So, um, so, but by the way, him, my partner, RJ, he started, um, I met him a year ago. He started coming, to, I was throwing a few events, me and Munif and some other friends, we were throwing some of these events. Yeah. In Cal an Airbnb event in California and in Houston. And this guy, RJ, he just showed up to the events and he kept like volunteering his time to help, help, help. And then, you know, he was from my area. So I said, oh, you're an agent. Show me these houses. Get me into mm -hmm. these houses. And then he helped me. And then the house across the street um, from here, I saw somebody moving old carpet out of the house. It looked real bad. So I, I ran outside. I said, hey, are you trying to sell this house? You know, let me know. And they were like, yeah. actually, yes. Yeah. So boom, we got in the contract. We bought that house. And that's the first time. That was the first intentional flip we did. And I partnered with him. I borrowed that money, like over a million in cash to buy it and rehab it. I borrowed that money from that first real estate mentor that I had. Whoa. He saw me, yeah, he saw me join Sub 2 doing these deals. And he was like, hey, how can I get into some of these? I said, you can loan me money. That's how. <laughs> and um. <laughs> I want to hear like everything about that. Like one, like, yes, he was your mentor, but how did you get him to lend you 1.2? Was this the first trial? Was this the first time you asked him for money or how was, walk us through that process. So, so years ago, he lent me like um, a few thousand. He, I think he lent me like a $20,000 a long time ago. And I like long time, like 15 years ago. We were early yeah. friends. He let me 20000 and I would pay him every week when I got payday. I wasn't able to go out with my friends and drink and go to rest. I had to stay home because I had to pay him every week my paycheck for years. Never, You know, I didn't get to go out. Oh, you know, I, I lived in Japan for a few years and um, lived in London, um, just like doing like exchange programs in college just so I could see the world. And yeah. um I had to stay home all the time because I never had any any money. And no, Tokyo and London are really expensive cities. So, you know, so I was in, inside all the time or, you know, or out on my bike. Anyhow, but I, I did good with him and paid him that back. But but also when he when I got into sub two, he saw me doing deals. He um, um a house next door to uh, I was a partner at a house, an Airbnb in Fresno. And the lady next door said, hey, I'm going to be selling my house. Just letting you know. I was like, hey, well, would you accept an off market offer? She was like, yes. Long story short, uh, I, I just told a friend of mine, hey, you might. I know you wanted to buy a house. You want to check this out? So he negotiated her down a little bit and then he got cold feet. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, I know this house will do great because I manage the house next door. And I know how much it's been making every month for the last year. And this house is nicer and it's in really good condition. So I asked that mentor, hey, would you, I never even heard of borrowing money like this until I got in this up too. And they talk, start talking about private money and you just ask somebody and I didn't know you could do that. And like I asked him because he had talked about working. I said, hey, let me borrow. Because I started hearing the terms, you know, like 10% yeah. is typical, you know. So I asked, hey, let me borrow 200000 to buy this house. And put it on Airbnb at ten percent interest and um, for a year with the option to extend. And he said, you know, interest only payments. He said, okay. And then 
And then 14 months later, the value had went up. So I was able to refinance it and give him all of his money back. Yeah. Without any money. And it went up from 200 to 300,000, which 200,000 was like the lowest price in that city, Fresno, you know, but it went up to 300 and then appraised. And so he was able to get all his money. So I had that, had that good by him. So when this opportunity came up, um, I asked him and he was like, yeah, like no problem. And then, and then we went on, we got on a roll and we got into seven projects, seven flips, but, um, but at that time when you bought the first mail, like, did you know any, I know you said you just got into sub two and learn about private money, but did you like, how did you structure the paperwork? Did you do the promissory note due to trust or was it just no? Yeah. I knew about the lien. I knew about a lien. So he had a first lien position, you know, okay. um, you know, I knew the title company knew how to do all that stuff, you Smart. know, they let them yeah. do it. Um, you let them do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I learned now, now I've done it probably, you know, five, six times. The title company yeah. will write up the note. And the first time, actually, a guy was like, hey, I know I, I have a contact, a guy that can write notes for you for mm -hmm. like $500. Mm -hmm. But then the title lady was like, oh, I can do it. I'm like, okay, do it. Perfect. And I send yeah. her the terms, does it. He has to notarize it. Um, but um, yeah, and then so... Yeah, um, but, I but to some of the you, I wanted to ask you about your property management business. You've grown it, you've started it. Do you have like a team helping you manage all these properties? Yeah, it's been it's been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, I swear. <laughs> like so, like there was a sweet spot um where I was managing 25 units by myself. Mm -hmm. I was in sub two, and then I got my first like wholesale deal. And, and me and Ty LG, he helped me close it and helped me sell it. He's he's a master closer ninja from California, and um, and we split one hundred eighty thousand dollars on this deal. Someone wanted to sell their house. I met him. I didn't say anything. I just asked questions. So let me bring my partner. We did that deal. I said, "Damn Airbnb, I'm trying to do this now." <laughs> but um, but I said, "No, nah, let me not throw the baby out with the bathwater." Yeah. Let's keep this business, but let me start to delegate. Mm -hmm. So I hired yeah. my first VA, and I was a friend of a, a friend of mine, Airbnb, King of Fresno, Kyle Stanley. He said, Noah, don't you know, um, right at the beginning of COVID, Airbnb let go of like 2,500 employees. Their call centers were in the Philippines. And he said, you can just look online and you can find Airbnb VAs pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, type that in. Is that what you're looking for? So I did. And the first VA I found um was amazing That's she was like cool. she was so good she knew all the rules she knew how to talk to people she was finishing my sentences she was great and then um and then you know okay well now let's hire another one and and another one and another this is where my, my weakness came i wasn't good with leadership and like management really so like i never said okay you're a boss now i didn't make her a boss so then a couple of them fought mm -hmm quit you know because the other one was a bully a little bit but but she stayed yeah. and then and it, yeah. so now now a few years later now I got like 12 full-time people right so it's like the more people I hire and the more softwares I pay for my personal take home is getting less and less and less yeah. it gets depressing <laughs> but then I'm buying my time back and I get mm -hmm. to start to grow and grow and grow I so yeah. So we, you know, I like, I, I spent like probably thirty thousand dollars on customized software for the team to have all their SOPs and ticketing systems, and just because mm -hmm. what the crazy thing that happened was in our own internal communication was was breaking down really bad. Yeah. I'll tell one VA something, and then later that day another VA asked me the same question. I'm like, this mm -hmm. has got to stop. Yeah, they yeah. work at the ship state is twenty four hours. You know, we got people rotating twenty four hours. And different days, it's like if they didn't, hear, if I didn't tell them, then they didn't hear it. So I have, yeah. Usually, I have one VA. My my senior VA trains all the new ones, mm -hmm. but now with number ten, it's like it gets watered down, and they keep asking me questions. I'm like, but no, you got, it needs to be written down. Don't ask me. And yeah. I, I just I just recently like hired my first, you know, person here in the states, mm -hmm. full employee. 
And I said, um, and it was like, uh, I'm not, I'm not really religious, but I was like, let me find someone here, you know, like, um, and I said, you know, I, and so I don't know if you guys know Isa or Isa, Isa, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah. She, she graduated UC Berkeley. So she was here in my area and she was like, you need some, I was like, I, I need to hire someone that's dedicated that mm -hmm. can really dive in and not be distracted with their own stuff in their life. I need yeah. someone that's really ready for real full, full time. Like, mm -hmm. like me. I can't, now I can't get them like me. They're not going to work a hundred hours. But I live close. Yeah. Like, like someone. Mm -hmm. And so, she, okay. So we need someone that can go out of town, out of state to check on these properties. Cause what I did is really difficult trying to manage properties in other multiple States. A lot mm -hmm. of people would say, don't do it. I'll even say, don't do it. You know, unless you, unless you like pain, you know, but mm -hmm. like, um, but I did it. And so I need, I need a guy or a girl that can travel out of town to, cause I, I would try to hire different people to go check on properties, but they didn't have, they didn't really know what we need. I yeah. need the consistency. I need one person to, to be on top of this. And, um, so I, so she said, get a, a recent college graduate, you know, I had to choose, do I want experience or do I want like drive yeah. and availability yeah. and I, for affordability? Like I can't pay somebody crazy money. So mm -hmm. I need someone somewhat affordable. She said, recent mm -hmm. college graduate, I put up these job ads near these universities and I want someone that can come here, like to my house and, and work with me in person. So they can't, I want them to live close to me too. Yeah. And, um, and so I put up job ads. I didn't get any hit from that, but then a guy hit me up from this free group, sub to free group, creative finance. And he was asking me about lead generation or something. I was like, hold on, where are you? You local, okay. You're not really doing real estate yet. Well, come, let's come meet together, and let's mm -hmm. see if, if you want to work for me. You know, yeah. I said, how much are they paying you at your day job? I said, okay, if I can match that, will you work for me full time? Um, and I need you. I need you 60 hours a week. I need you 10 hours a day, six days a week. Half of it will be at home from your home, doing remote work. Half of it you'll be traveling to the properties, inspecting them. And, and it's going to be, you have to be available to be spending the night out of town, like every week, if need be out of state. Sometimes I was and like, I, that's the dream job travel. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And so, you know, and so, but I was, you know, he, he came from Russia, right? He's mm -hmm. 21 years old. He just came from Russia. He didn't have like his real ID yet. So he couldn't fly. I was oh, like, yeah. okay, well, let's wait till you get it so you can fly. And then, so, but then he started volunteering with me just for free on nights and weekends for like three or four months. He came wow. with me out of town on his off day. So I, he really like showed dedication, you know? Whatever. And um, and so then eventually I was like, okay, I'll hire you. No questions. You're going to get paid every week. Same what you were getting paid, you know, about 1100 what I'm so curious too, like with you, like managing so much properties, like the one that you acquire for yourselves and using it for fix and flip or short term rental, um, how are you finding the funds for those and being able to separate it too? <coughs> A lot of private money again, you know. Um, so, like, I partnered, like, like, I partnered, I don't know if you guys know Munif Saza, but yeah. uh, a year ago, um, about two years ago when he he had like came in silver medal at the closers Olympics, everyone yeah. was congratulating him and I congratulated him. And he was like, Hey, let's get an Airbnb. I was like, um, he was like, I got, the, I got a deal and I got someone to lend us the money. I'm like, say less, let's go. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> how good is that? Right. I know yeah. how to he, he got the deal and the money. I can't say no. And then I thought it was going to be a one-time thing. So I actually, at that time, I had another kind of full-time guy working with me. And I told him, hey, I'm a, I'll give you half of my half of this property just for being on the team, you know. So I was trying to give him some, you know, my other guy some, um, you know. Um, some of the deals. So even the with game. all this, how are you, but with all this private money, like, how are you finding these people? Are these people within your network or people coming to you and be like, no, I have money? So for, 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 these, for these big flips, it was that one guy. Right. Mm -hmm. That's been it so far. But, um, but there were two other people. There was there was a guy in sub two and we were partnering together. Like yeah. so. So right when I joined sub two, 
uh, Pace Morby was coming. He was traveling across the U.S. and he came to the Bay Area and I was at the meetup and um, and he, um, you know, the, we, there was a small meetup after the meetup just with like five people. And, and so Pace actually came to my mentor's house because um, he just needed an office to borrow for the next day. Right. right. Pace was like, does okay. anyone have an office? I need a whiteboard. It's like, yeah, come over here. I got a spot. And um, and my mentor, he just he had like like an empty house. He what he didn't he wasn't even there. And like a, we had a small meetup and Pace heard me talking about Airbnb. He says, hey, would you want to manage one of my houses on Airbnb? I said, sure. So he was like, OK, well, it's in Vegas. The key's under the mat. I was like, OK, I'll be there next week. And um, so that, and so because I had already managed properties in Vegas. So I was like confident. I knew about the hotel liquidation store, warehouse, whatever, where to get mm-hmm. the furniture. I knew some cleaners and handymen already. Anyhow, so. Pace started like, uh, so the very first guest who booked, it was a woman she booked for a month and she ended up extending eight months in a row. And it was like double the normal rent rate. So Pace was happy. He started like shouting me out a lot and he started giving me more properties to manage for him and Cody. And so I never got good at cold calling and wholesaling or none of that. But other guys who were good at it, they would like say, hey, no, I got a deal. Yeah. Right. So, hey, I got a deal. Let's partner. So I start partnering with these guys. And one of those guys in the first year, he was the first guy who lent me money because I've always been really shy. I never asked anyone for money before this. But he like he was partnering with deals, he said and he, he would loan me my entry, my part of the entry fee on one deal. And yeah. then he was like, I got this other we were going to do these other four properties that I was telling you about. But he was like, you know what? I'm not going to do them. But if you want to, you can do it. I was like, can you loan me the money, my assignment fee or uh, whatever? So he financed me my assignment fee. Oh. Um, 500 a month over two years. And um, so he financed me that. And then, um, um, yeah, so that's, he financed me that. And then, that, so that was kind of the first one. And then that mentor. And then when I partnered with Monif, Monif was really good at raising the private money. He would just, he would just grab people. He said, no, I got a guy. I got another, I got a woman. I got a guy. I, you know, he just would keep getting them because he knew how to like, he's always doing these free Zooms like you guys do. You guys provide value to the community. So like you guys know a lot of people by just by doing this, you'll have just a whole following of people who will be like, hey, where can I put my money? Yeah. And, uh, and so and so Munif kept bringing people. Like I never had the nerve to say it because I would be a little bit nervous because I know in the real estate business, it's never cookies and cream. It's not smiles and rainbows. It's rough sometimes, you know, it's ups and downs. So I, don't, I, I didn't want to yeah. take anybody's money. Yeah. I don't want you mad at me if something goes wrong. But like, but Munif was like, no problem. I got that. Yeah. And then, so he just kept bringing people, just kept bringing people. We bought like five or six deals, um, sub twos around the country. And all and, and, and Monif was so good. He was like, look, we'll pay you 8% interest. We're not accepting partners. We get 8% interest only payments, three years, take it or leave it. And they'll be hmm. like, okay, we're in. So Monif would be like, nah, you if you want to work with us, this is what we're paying. And so he yeah. so you know, um and so, so even so, with those two, like some of those deals were like were those deals like buy and hold or were they like fix and flip? Yeah, buy and hold. So buy and hold with no exit strategy. It was just like two, three years. We'll, don't worry. We'll take care of you. You know, we'll figure it out. Uh-huh. In two, three years. Yeah. Yeah. Have and, you uh, ever so, encountered? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, and then one of those guys was like, okay. And we, we always told people, look, if you want your money back, just give us 60 days notice. We'll get your money back. Yeah. And one guy was like, okay, um, his two years was up. I want my money. And when he just found another lender to take care of him, because, you know, because sometimes those those properties take a while to make that money, you know. Yeah. And um, so, you know, so we did that for a while. And then one time we um, we went to Dallas and we met a woman named Tracy and she was so nice. And she was like, hey, let's look at these properties. We were doing like some meetups and we found this five unit and like I just trusted her. She was like, I like it. We should, you know, and I was like, I like it. Let's let's get it. And it was like, mm-hmm. Monif, and so we, um, me and Monif had some money to put a down payment, but we weren't sure. Oh, you know what? We weren't sure how we were gonna. We needed to do a fix and flip because it wasn't creative. It was cash, and yeah. um, 
And I was like, I got an idea. Let's ask Pace for the 150 down payment we need for this property. And like, I had never thought about asking Pace for money before. Uh, but Monif was like, okay, that's a good idea because I'm going to see him tomorrow at this property walkthrough in Phoenix. And um, and Monif said, um, hey, Pace, we got this deal. It's five units. It's going to be five Airbnbs in South Dallas. Um, and we want to invite you to be a partner. And, and Pace was like, why do you need me? And Monif hmm. said, no, we don't need you, but we like you. <laughs> and, and, I like that response. <laughs> yeah. And so Pace was like, all right, I'm in. And so Pace put the 150 up. So so that that right there, that's a gem. That's a gem. We yeah. don't need you. We, we need like you. You. Yeah. you know? Like, and so yeah. Pace had a little bit of FOMO. He wanted to get it. He wanted to get, get some of what we had going. <laughs> Man, yeah. I love that. Like, as you said, like created that FOMO because everyone who I think a lot of persons, if Pace had asked that, they'll be like stuck. I'm like, I need the money or something. But the yeah. fact that he said, we don't need you, we like you. And it, I think it goes back to when persons are afraid of asking others for money, like they feel like they're begging for yeah. money, but it's always you're providing an opportunity because if you don't provide that opportunity, their money just sitting down, like just there, yeah. but you're paying like so much money and interest that they can make money on their money without still without doing anything. Yeah, and that's what we want to do, right? And that's what Pace preaches all the time, of, like mm -hmm. making money together with all his friends. So, hey, we like you. We're your friend. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. How we can work together. Man. Yeah. But with, takes with even some of these deals, Noah, like have you ever encountered anything where either you structured a deal and you had like an issue with a lender or just how the deal was structured. And you're like, man, I should have structured, we should have structured a deal in this way because now this is a pain in the ass. Oh yeah. You know, I make tons of mistakes, tons of pain in the asses. So, so more problem, you know, all the time. Like, um, like for that first flip we did, we mm -hmm. offered, so we were trying to convince him to lend us the money for this first flip. Yeah. And, and he, a lot of times he, you know, he's, I know him well. And a lot of times um, he just won't say yes or no. He'll just mm -hmm. listen. He'll be quiet. Okay. I got to go or change the subject. He won't, he won't say yes or no. And then, and so I was trying to convince him. I was like, okay, we'll give you two points, 10% interest. Just like what I heard around, you know, was normal. Yeah. We'll give you two points, 10% interest. And, and then my friend was like, and tell him we'll give him 25% of the profit too. And, he, and I told him that. And he was like, okay, okay, deal. Like, mm -hmm. he didn't need to look at the property. He didn't need to look at nothing. He just was like, okay, deal. So we offered him that. And, um, and so we did that for a couple, um, couple properties. And then we said, look, let's change it. Now we're going to use hard money. We just need you for a second position um, mm -hmm. loan for a down payment. And how about we don't give you any percentage of the profit, but we'll give you 14% interest on your money. Because he said his interest is going up because he borrows the money from a credit line. He has ah. a credit line, like a big credit line against his stock. It was like Apple stock or whatever. So he mm -hmm. was paying interest. So, you know, he says his interest, his payment is going up on his. So, OK, we'll give you 14 percent, but no, um, but no profit share. No yeah. And that's not bad. Yeah. That's still not bad, too. It's a good solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, with, so with all those things, even structuring those deals, like knock on wood, were there any other, like <laughs> any other issues that came up and you guys had to think creatively just to fix that situation when it comes on yeah. to borrowing yeah. someone's money? Yes. Yeah. So, oh, when it comes to what? Like borrowing the money part of it. Well, yeah, let me tell you about this. Um, so there was another deal, Tracy, the same woman, she brought... She told me, hey, Noah, this, we're, um, someone brought a wholesaler brought me this deal in Pensacola, Florida. There's 20 little houses on a lot. Um, they want six fifty. I think it's a good deal. We could turn it into a short term rental community. And for whatever reason, I just believed her. Everything she said, I just like, you know what? I just like her because when we visited Dallas, she's like, oh, stay in my Airbnb. She had all this food and stuff in the free. We just liked her and just, and she's a 20 year veteran in Dallas. So we just believed everything she said. So me and Monif were like, okay, let's get it. I think we sent a 
$50,000 non-refundable deposit or something. And then he was like, try to get, he said, no, a call and try to get us a, a commercial loan. I had never done that before. So I'm mm -hmm. calling around. And it's like, it seemed like it's not working. Like they're like, no, 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 no. It takes months to get a commercial loan. It might take months. Like it's not easy to get not a commercial easy. loan for a commercial property. You can't, it's not, you know, you can't just think, oh yeah, I'm gonna get a loan today. Mm -hmm. No. And, um, and so now our $50,000 is on the line and, uh, and we don't know what to do. And I'm like, we need to get private money because he's already raised private money so many times. Was this we $50,000 your personal cash or private money? No, this was our personal cash. Yeah, me and okay. Monique said okay. that. And, um, and so, um, um, but then um, I was trying to get the loan and I was going through all this process, but it didn't seem like it was working out and we were running out of time. You know, we're supposed to close and we're running out of time and couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, let's raise private money. And then mm -hmm. for some reason we were like, oh no, you can't raise. Cause we need, we thought we needed 650 for the purchase and 850 for rehab approximately, yeah. you know, one, six mil, 1.6 million or whatever. And, um, and we're like, that's kind of a lot to be, um, you know, raising private money real quick like this in the, in the, in the sub two group or whatever, wherever. And so, and we had just started hearing about these um, crowd funds, right? Pace mm. had just started talking about crowd fund, Reg CF. I don't know where, but it was right when he started probably um, hanging out with Vina Jetty, probably. Yeah. And um, and we and I and I texted Pace and I said, "Hey, Pace, um, we want your blessing to raise money in the group because we've raised smaller amounts, but you know, if something bigger. Hey, we want we want your approval to try to yeah. raise this money." And you know what? And we'll um, and we'll give you um. How about we give you five percent of the deal while we at it? You know. And he must have been busy because he didn't reply. And I was like, okay, how about ten percent? And he was like, all right, let's go. And um, <laughs> and he was like, get on this. He was like, get on this Zoom with me tomorrow at noon. Okay. It was actually called an air meet, not a Zoom. And we got on this Zoom, this air meet, and it was, it was eleven hundred people on this call. I had I I've still never seen a call that big. Yeah. And he had on a cowboy hat that day. It was him and Molly. Yes. Right. And um, yeah. I don't know if you were there when he brought us onto the stage. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, Monif and Noah, um, we're doing a deal together. Tell him about the deal, guys. And Monif's like, we're going to have an amazing short term rental community. And you have a limited time to join this offer. And and we were like, and we were trying to, I tried to reverse engineer how much money do we need? Oh, and we just, we didn't know anything about how to do this. But like I heard, you can only have 32 people in a in a 506B, whatever it was. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, so if we need about 1.6, that means everyone needs to put about 32,000, blah, blah, blah. Oh no, 50, 53,000. That's what I thought. I was like, well, whoever, if, you, if you're ready to invest 53,000, like let us know. And then all these people start saying, me, 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 I want in, I want in. I want. Okay, wow, a lot of people interested. If you're interested, email Noah <clears throat> and put in the subject line, Pensacola deal. And yeah. so like 100 people emailed me and I responded back. I said, okay, well, if you're ready to deploy 53,000 in the next 30 days, email me back in the subject line, say ready to go. You know, <laughs> like we wanted it real clear. We're not I remember that. that. I just joined sub two when that Zoom was going on. So I remember that so clearly. Because <laughs> we didn't want a bunch of questions and yeah. tire kickers because we didn't have all the answers yet. We were still figuring mm -hmm. it out. We just want people who are ready to go. Yeah. And then about 20 people responded to that. Right. And then we were like, okay, we got enough to purchase it, almost enough to rehab mm -hmm. it. And then we realized... Yeah. We talked to the, we contacted the attorney. Molly gave us some phone numbers of some of the attorneys. And, um, and they were like, oh no, but only, you can only take the accredited investors on the 506. Mm. And we're like, oh, okay, let me email them all and find out if they're accredited. So like half are, half aren't. Okay, so we're gonna, the, the ones who are, that's enough to buy the property. So we're gonna tell other people just to wait for now. And yeah. we're gonna start the reg CF also, which is for unaccredited. Unaccredited. So we did yeah. the hybrid. We did like the hybrid. We did the 506 in about a month. We got the money, bought the property. And then it ended up taking like a year for the reg CF to finish. We did that with Nick, Nick McGrew. Yeah. We, we switched attorneys mm -hmm. and went with Nick. And we finally just finished it. And um, 
we're still finishing. We, st we still have room for a few more investors right now in uh, 2023. Actually, our, our deadline our deadline is uh, January 1st, 2024. And we almost have, uh, yeah, we, we, we still need like a couple hundred thousand. So um, every time Monif like makes a post, we'll get like another hundred or 200,000. And uh, just drop it in. No, mm -hmm. not though. Like if, if persons want to um, invest with you guys. Yeah, I'm trying to like find the right way to word it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, what's the best way for persons to reach you if they're interested in doing that? Um, so you can reach me um, on my Instagram or my phone number. Uh, Instagram is just Noah Hoffman, N-O-A-H-H-O-F-F-M-A-N, Airbnb, A-I-R-B-N-B. Um, Perfect. Or text me, or text me at 510-502-6220. Text me. Is that a number? <laughs> Wait, give, that, give, us, give us that number again. Okay. Uh, 510-502-6220. And um, you guys, for you guys that are listening, the his link to his Instagram is on the description. So if you guys need to go there real quick to find him and be able to save it for right after this episode, you guys um please feel free to do so. Love it. And no, I have one more question before we wrap up. Okay. What advice would you give to someone who is either looking to get into short-term rental or property management in particular, and also like combining yep. private money for those short-term rentals? I mean, I, honestly, I think people, um, like if you, so it depends if you have money or if you don't have money, right? So mm -hmm. obviously like the easiest way to start probably is if you have a little bit of money to rent your first property to put on Airbnb. Now I normally don't promote arbitrage. I'll rather own the property, but when you're brand new, it's not easy to get your first property, but you, but but it's a lot easier to rent a property. Go rent an apartment, furnish it, put it on Airbnb, get some experience. That's the easiest way to buy your way in. Yeah. Now it's free if you could just manage someone else's property, but you have to have someone that's willing to trust you with their property. So that's it. It's one of those two ways. That's how you got to gain experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to risk. You know, you, it, once you, the more experience you get, the more people will trust you, you know, no. man, this was like, so I learned a ton, especially as it relates to the short-term rental management side, but it was also a reminder, like based on your story that you didn't try to figure everything out, everything out before diving in, you just dive in and you figure things out as you go along, not saying you guys should do that all the time. But I think he Noah didn't get into analysis paralysis. He's like, all right, this is it. I see an opportunity. Let's take it. Okay, this is a hiccup. Now, how do we fix it? And I think once you guys like try to have that approach as well, it will make your life so much easier and help you to scale. And once the problem arises, just fix it there and then. So that was a good reminder for me. So thank you for that. That was yeah, really good. I really, I really loved how creative you get you got with like the crowdfunding and raising capital hybrid model. That is amazing. Um yeah. very creative on y'all's part. Um like yeah, quick thinking on your feet. It's, it's yes. <laughs> we actually uh, we actually had to sign a piece of paper saying we relinquish our EMD because we were late. And we had to say and, and we had to give it to him, and then then he would consider still selling it to us, giving us an extension, but we had, we, um, we had to sign that away. Yeah. I would cry. I would like cry so much. You know, <laughs> like, this, yeah. I, I just, we just did that again a couple of weeks ago. We put a $46,000 EMD on a house here and that we were going to flip. Uh, and, and then we were, we were being delayed with the closing and we had to sign. They wanted us. Okay, we'll give you an extension, but you have to release the EMD. You have to release it. That means just no backing out once you release mm -hmm. it. And we released this forty six thousand dollar EMD. It's just a few weeks ago, and then we end up backing out of the deal. So we lost that money. Ooh. Ooh. You guys, happened. this is okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this happened. It was. We had to make a decision. You know what? It's still too high. You know, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna take this loss and, and, and yeah. keep it moving. Man, might as well lose that than lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So, right. 
so it's, true. It's, it's way better than that. But no, this was like really good. Appreciate you for saying yes to being on Money Mondays, um, especially with um, with everything that's going on in the short term rental space. I think the fact that you're still you're still doing it, I think it just goes back to knowing your market, having a team in place. Nothing is wrong with even investing out of state as well. And one of the big another takeaway was that you have a team in place to help with the management side. And they find that once you have your team and your processes, as much as it cuts into your profit, which you will do, it will give you more time for you to even grow. So I think that what you said is also a key reminder for a lot of persons. Like it is okay to give away stuff, but that's gonna that you're gonna get way more of your time and you're gonna grow in what you really want to do. So that was also a great takeaway. Yeah. That was thank you good. so much, Noah, for being here with us. And thank you to our viewers. Thank you guys for watching and supporting our channel. Um, yes, please hit that like, subscribe. That helps us and keeps us motivated. And uh, just, you know, if you guys have any questions, any ideas, anything that you want to hear, we do talk about it and we get into it. We get down mm -hmm. with the numbers. Uh, we try to be as um, clear as we can so that you guys know what it really is like. Like yeah. Noah was saying, it's not all... Uh, sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> it's hard. So it's hard. definitely ask those questions. We'd love to answer them. Um, yeah. And thank you guys. Thank you again. This is, oh, it's Thanksgiving week. So you guys, oh, yeah. thank you so much. Um, thank you. So whether you're looking to finance your next project, launch or expand a new business, we hope that this episode gave you insights, strategies, and tips so that you guys can also raise capital and invest with purpose. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.